You guys can grab a seat. If you have a Bible, go to Luke chapter 19. We're going to be in verses 1 through 10. So if you do not have a Bible, one of the Bibles in, uh, in front of you in a seat, that's going to be on page 1043. Actually, just like last week, but we'll also be going on to 44 as well. But page 1043, we're going to be in Luke chapter 19. We are in our final week of a series that we have called Walking with Jesus. And the reason why we're doing this series is because when we started this youth ministry back in the summer, I asked you guys, what is the one thing that you want most out of this ministry? And overwhelmingly, the majority of you said, I want a deeper, growing relationship with God. And I believe that the best way that that happens is through walking, and actually the only way that that happens is through walking with Jesus in life. And so we've been looking at different teachings of Jesus where he talks about what it means to be his disciple or one of his followers. And then last week we saw his encounter with the rich young ruler, a man who approached Jesus in the wrong way, and, and Jesus you know, showed him the true way. And then today, to close out, we're going to be uh, looking at a story about a man named Zacchaeus, and the message is titled, Who Jesus Came to Save. Speaking of Zacchaeus, if any of you grew up in church, I'm sure you have heard this song that the lyrics are up on the screen. Erica is smiling because I told them last week that I was going to do this, and she started singing the song. So I'm going to have her come up now and sing. I'm just kidding. Yeah. I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. That would be awesome. I'm going to sing. No, I'm not going to sing it. I'm just going to read it, okay? So if you grew up in church, you know this. If you haven't, it's a very easy song. I'm just going to read the lyrics for us for this song. This is how it goes. Zacchaeus was a wee little man, and a wee little man was he. He climbed up into a sycamore tree for the Lord he wanted to see. This is like a Dr. Seuss uh, thing. And when the Savior passed that way, he looked up in the tree and said, Zacchaeus, you come down for I'm going to your house today. I'm going to your house today. Zacchaeus was a wee little man, but a happy man was he. For he had seen the Lord that day, and a happy man was he. A very happy man was he. Now what we are going to read in Luke chapter 19, verses 1 through 10, give us a little more of an in-depth look at what this song sings. But something that we notice here is that Jesus encounters a man named Zacchaeus, who is only identified as being a wee little man. But after his encounter with Jesus, it says that he became a happy man. In fact, he was a very happy man. And not only was he happy, but we're actually, as we're going to see, his life was changed forever. And so in this, in this text, we see Jesus display and, and teach us his mission so clearly. And I just pray that it would be a mission that would transform us from the inside and help us to have the same heart for others as Jesus does. So Luke chapter 19, starting in verse 1. If you don't have a Bible, it's up on the screen. This is what it, it says. He entered Jericho, he is Jesus, entered Jericho and was passing through. And behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector and was rich. And he was seeking to see who Jesus was, but on account of the crowd, he could not because he was small in stature. So he ran on ahead and climbed up into a sycamore tree to see him, for he was about to pass that way. And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, hurry and come down, for I must stay at your house today. So he hurried and came down and received him joyfully. And when they saw it, they all grumbled. He has gone in to be the guest of a man who is a sinner. And Zacchaeus stood and said to the Lord, Behold, Lord, the half of my goods I give to the poor. And if I have defrauded anyone of anything, I restore it fourfold. And Jesus said to him, today salvation has come to this house, since he also is a son of Abraham. For the son of man came to seek and to save the lost. So 
we see Jesus here entering a town called Jericho. He was on his way to Jerusalem, where he would eventually would be put on a cross and killed and then ultimately resurrected, but he is heading that way. If you are reading, if you were going through the Gospel of Luke, this is near the very end of his life. This is actually, in Luke, this is the last encounter that Jesus has with someone who's not one of his disciples or one of the uh, religious authorities. This is the last encounter that he has with, essentially, a stranger. And then we see, in verse 2, Behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus. And he was a chief tax collector, and he was rich. If you know anything about what a tax collector was, a tax collector was someone who worked for the Roman government, and they were hated. And the reason why they were hated was because, obviously, no one likes to get their taxes uh, t- taken. I, I, I hate, you know, doing all that stuff. So no one liked him for that reason. But not only that, it was also because these tax collectors, one, most like a lot of them were Jewish, and so they were working for the Roman government, and the Roman government was taking all the money from the Jewish people, but if you were a Jew and you said, I'll work, I'll be a tax collector, you basically are a traitor of all of the Jewish people, so you had abandoned your heritage, so people didn't like you because of that. They would pocket more money than they really should have, so they were greedy, and they were slimy, and they were rude, and they were mean. And not only do we see that Zacchaeus was a tax collector, but it says that he was a chief tax collector. It's actually the only time in the New Testament where it says chief tax collector. We don't exactly know what that means, but it's likely that a chief tax collector was in charge of other tax collectors. So he was the boss of the people that no one liked. So you th- how do you think people thought about him? And then secondly, it also says that he was rich because of all these things, all the money that he had most certainly accumulated from other people by stealing from them essentially, just charging more than, than they deserved. But then, verse 3 tells us he was seeking to see who Jesus was. But on account of the crowd, he could not see because he was small in stature. That's why we sing that he was a wee little man. He had to climb up into a tree to see Jesus. But something that is interesting is I just gave you a description of most likely what Zacchaeus was like and how other people saw him, and yet he was still wanting to see Jesus. And he would stop at nothing. He was short, but he was determined. That's like my tagline for life, short and determined. I got a laugh out of Kelly. That's, that's good enough. So he climbed up into a tree to see Jesus. Now, we don't necessarily know why, but if Zacchaeus had heard anything about Jesus, he had heard that this Jesus was most likely the person or not most likely, this Jesus was the person who said he was a friend of tax collectors and sinners. He was someone who performed miracles. The people were saying that he was the Messiah, the chosen one, who was going to save people from their sin. So as Zacchaeus is looking out to Jesus, Jesus calls out to him. He calls him by name. He says, Zacchaeus, hurry and come down for I must stay at your house today. He doesn't say, I want to go to your house, or, hey, man, would it be okay if I stop by? No, 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 he says, I must. He invites himself over to his house. And Zacchaeus says that he received him joyfully. Now let's pause. If we look at this story very, very critically, none of the things that are happening should be taking place. A tax collector who's one of the worst people in all society and a chief tax collector at that. And he's also a rich man. And we know what Jesus says about rich people, not that that it's impossible for them to come to him, but that it would be very, very difficult, like we talked about last week with the camel going through the eye of a needle. Just it's an impossible thing for for a rich person to get to the kingdom of God without God's grace. And yet Jesus is still interacting with him. And then we know Jesus, the perfect, sinless son of God. So these two could not be more opposite. And actually, if we look at verse 7, it says, when they saw it, the crowds that is, they grumbled. And they said, this man has gone in 
to be the guest of a man who is a sinner. We ourselves, we can look at this and kind of think the same thing. Like, Jesus, what are you, what are you doing? Do you know who this guy is? Why are you spending time with him? Why would you even want to be around someone like that? Don't you know what he's done and how he treats people and what he does? Don't you know that? How often do we look at other people in the same way? Well, you know what she did. Well, you know who they are. Can you believe that they did that thing? Can you believe that so-and-so and and -and so-and-so are doing this and that? The list goes on. And you know what? It's those people that Jesus is seeking to save. Because Jesus, another title for him is the Son of Man, Jesus came to seek and to save the lost. And Zacchaeus was a lost man. How do you know? How do I know if I'm lost? I think there's three ways to know if I am lost. And they line up with Zacchaeus as well. The first thing to know if I'm lost is if you're unsatisfied with life. Zacchaeus was a rich man. He had all the possessions that he could have ever wanted. And yet he was not satisfied. There was something that led him to seek out Jesus. Because if he was satisfied, he wouldn't have gone out to see what this Jesus was all about. And maybe for you, the things that, that you are involved in, the things that should bring you joy, they don't. The passions that you had for your favorite sport or your favorite activity or your favorite, you name it, are fading. You're maybe coming to realize that some of the people that you thought were your friends are not your friends, and therefore you become unsatisfied with your life. The second thing that you can know, or a way to know if you are lost, is that you're searching for more. Zacchaeus was searching for more. He could never have had enough money, enough status, enough power, because if he, was, if he was satisfied and he was content, he wouldn't have sought out Jesus. He wouldn't have climbed up to a tree to see Jesus. And for you, you may have all the accomplishments, all the status, all the power, all the friends, all the followers that you could ever want, and yet you still want more. The famous theologian Augustine says this, he said, our hearts find no peace until they rest in God. And so in your life, if you are searching for more, if you are searching for more popularity, more followers, more any of those things that I listed, remember that none of those things will satisfy you unless you find peace and rest in God. And lastly, the, the, the way you know you would be lost is that you're seeking for purpose. Zacchaeus was a chief tax collector and a rich man and a wee little man. Those are the three things that, that the text tells us that he is. And he didn't want that. He wanted his life to be more. He wanted purpose. He, when he died, he didn't want it to say on his gravestone, Zacchaeus, tax collector, rich, short. He didn't want that because he wanted to see what Jesus had for him. And maybe you feel the same way. Because when someone asks you, who are you? What's the first thing that you say? Do you say, oh, I'm, a, I'm an athlete or I'm a band member, or say, I'm a son, or I'm a daughter, I'm a brother, I'm a sister, I'm a musician, I'm a straight-A student, I'm an honor roll student, I'm shy, I'm outgoing, I'm a troublemaker, I'm the golden child. What do people, what do you say to people when they ask you who you are? Zacchaeus wanted more than just being tax collector, rich, and short. And for you, there's more to you than just, all those, than just those things that I just listed. If you can relate to any of those things, know that there is hope because Jesus came to seek and to save those who are lost. Those who fill out the boxes of those three things, he is seeking to save those people. Which means he's seeking to save you. He's seeking you out. The crazy thing about this story is that when Zacchaeus was thinking that he was seeking out Jesus by getting to the top, and he looks out and he sees Jesus, Jesus looks at him, and he says, 
Zacchaeus. He is, Jesus is the one who is seeking out Zacchaeus the whole time. Jesus seeks out sinners, and he draws near to them. And I know this because God has chosen to save humanity through Jesus, who was a man, God and man together, 100% man, 100% God. God knew that we could not work our way to him through our good deeds, and instead, God came down to show us the way to live and to show us that we are in desperate need of a Savior. And so in Jesus coming to earth, he associated himself with sinners, with people like you and me. Jesus was and is the only perfect sinless man, and every single person that he interacted with on earth was sinless. And Jesus still could not help himself but be drawn to sinners because Jesus is full of love and compassion. Matthew 9, 36 says, when he saw the crowds, he had compassion on them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. Jesus had compassion on a crowd full of sinners, on people who had rebelled against God and yet he still has love for them. It's because they were harassed and helpless like you and me. Life has beaten us up and we have no chance to pick ourselves up or do anything to benefit ourselves. And so this is why Jesus came. He came to save sinners, but not just to save them. Because look at verse eight. Look at what happened to Zacchaeus after his encounter with Jesus. Zacchaeus stood and said to the Lord, behold, Lord, half of my goods I give to the poor. And if I have defrauded anyone of anything, I restore it fourfold. What what is happening here? Zacchaeus is changed. This person who, like I said, has treated people poorly, who has stolen from them, who has pocketed more money than he deserves, his whole mindset, his whole life, his heart has shifted. But the thing that happened before that was an encounter with Jesus. And the same is true for you. A true encounter with Jesus will change your life. Which then begs the question, have you experienced this life change? Have you been touched by the grace of God like Zacchaeus was? Have you had an encounter with Jesus? And for Zacchaeus, he took a step of faith. He was the one who went to seek out Jesus, and it was there that he found out that Jesus had in fact been seeking him the whole time. He was a sinner, he was outcast. He was hated, he was greedy, but that didn't stop him. And for you, you may be sitting here thinking, this is a cool story, actually I've heard it before, that's great. But honestly, I don't think Jesus would want me. You say that he's seeking out sinners, and that sounds great, but you don't know what I've done. You don't know my heart. This is what Jesus says to that. He says, I do want you. I know what you've done. Look at what I've done on the cross. I died for you. I love you. I died so that you could experience true and full life. You say you have a bad heart. You say you've done bad things. I will give you a new heart. I will give you new desires. I will give you a new identity that is found in me. 2 Corinthians 5.17 says that anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. Other translations will say a new creation. The old life is gone and a new life has begun. This is what Jesus offers to those who seek him out and those are the ones, same ones that he is seeking out. This is what he offers to us. We are all sinners in need of a savior and Jesus is that savior. And so if you want to follow him, if you want to walk with him, you have to remember who you were before him, a sinner and a rebel against God. But if you've had this encounter with Jesus, you are not a sinner anymore. That is not who you are. Yes, you may still sin, but that is not your identity. You are now a saint. This is your identity. You are now a believer in Christ, in Jesus Christ. Zacchaeus, in this moment, went from being a sinner to a saint. And the same thing can happen for you today. 
at the end here, Jesus says that today salvation has come to this house, has come to this person's life. The question to you, has salvation come to your house? Has it come to your life? And if it has, do people know that it has? Do people know that you love Jesus? Do they know that he's changed your life? Has he changed your life? Jesus demands an entire whole life devotion from those who follow him. And so what we've been talking about this whole time, I'll ask these questions again. If you want to follow Jesus, will you deny yourself and your own sinful and selfish desires? Will you bear your cross and suffer with Jesus as you live out this life? Will you count everything else and count all else as worthless when compared to him? Will you accept the gift of grace that he's offered you? And will you admit that you are in need of a savior? And if yes, your life will be changed for the better because then you get to walk with Jesus and he will show you where to go. He'll show you what to do. He'll show you how to act and he'll show you the true way to live. Let's pray and we'll have the band come up. Oh, Father, we thank you for your word and just for the truth that you love and save sinners and that you don't leave them there just being sinners, but that you change them. You change their desires. You change who they are into a new person, into a new creation, a saint. I thank you for that truth, Lord. I thank you that you are on an endless pursuit of those who are far from you, like Zacchaeus, and like we all once were. I thank you, God, for this truth. I pray now that as we as we lift up our voices in song one more time, I just pray, Lord, that it would be a song that is lifted up to you out of, the, out of the abundance of our heart, out of the gratitude and all the things that you have done for us. And if we don't know you, Lord, I pray that now would be a time where maybe we do want to seek you out. And I pray that for those who feel that way, that they would see that you have indeed been seeking them out the whole time because you love sinners and you came to seek and to save the lost. I thank you, Lord, and I pray right now in this time of worship that your name would be lifted high. We pray these things in your name. Amen.